We now know prosecutors will seek the death penalty against Brian Koberger. He is accused of killing four University of Idaho students last year, including one victim who has family right here in the Valley. The criminal procedure in Idaho, where prosecutors had to list why they are seeking the death penalty, is a little different to what we have here in Arizona. True Crime Arizona's Brianna Whitney is here now to break all this down and analyze what prosecutors are going to have to prove in this case. It's interesting. There's quite a bit they have to prove, but it is a little bit different than Arizona, so it's actually something that I I learned today as we were going through all of this and basically in Idaho the prosecutors not only had to file their notice of intent to seek the death penalty within 60 days of the charges but they also had to list specific reasons for the death penalty in Idaho code basically they have to prove these murders are even more gruesome than other murders but if the defense comes back with even just one factor that could sway the jury it could change the trajectory of this case the man at the center of one of the biggest true crime cases in the country Brian Koberger now knows prosecutors will seek the death penalty against him for the deaths of Kaylee Gonsalves, Zana Kernodal, Madison Mogan, and Ethan Chapin, known as the Idaho Four. Zana has family ties in the Valley. I think the question on everybody's mind is why did this happen? You know, why, why did these four people die? Russ Richelsoff is a criminal defense attorney and looked over these new documents with me today. According to the filing, prosecutors listed five aggravating factors that they say justify the death penalty, including that multiple murders were committed, that these were especially heinous, atrocious, and cruel, that there was a disregard for human life, and that Koberger would be a continued threat. It's not often people on social media pay this much attention to court filings before a trial like they are with this. But Richelsoff says uniquely in this case, nobody still has any idea what Koberger's motive was. I think people are hoping that these filings in the case will provide some answers to that. But we don't know what the defense will present for mitigating factors, which could be something that might help explain why he allegedly did this. Are there unusual traumas in their history that would tend to offset these factors. Criminal defense attorney Jason Lamb says we only know the prosecution's tactics at this point, with the defense's case still unknown. Gosh, it's so odd because you said there the motive is still unknown. And when I hear the words heinous and cruel, I feel like you could describe every murder as right. heinous and cruel. Right. But let's move ahead and say the jury does convict him of murder. That is when these five aggravating circumstances would come into play, correct? That's correct. So it would all depend on what the sentence would be from there. And there's three possible options. So everybody stick with me because mm -hmm. it is a little bit confusing. But if we break it down, basically, if the jury finds that the prosecution proves any of those aggravating factors that you heard in the package to be true and not none of the mitigating factors that the defense uh, presents to be true, then it would be death. If they find one of those aggravating factors to be true, but they also feel that the defense proves any mitigating factor that would make the death penalty unjust, then it would be life in prison. Here's the kicker. If, even if he is convicted and found guilty of these murders, if the jury does not find that the prosecution proves any of these aggravating factors to be true, then he could be looking at life in prison with the possibility of parole in 10 years. And we don't know yet what the defense's mitigating factors are, so we might see that in a subsequent filing or something like that. That's what kind of everybody's waiting for. Yeah. Could that be like mental health or something? Yes, okay. mental health, right. past traumas, mm. maybe certain conditions that would make this so that he acted in such a way. It reminds me of the Brian Patrick mm. Miller zombie right. hunter stuff. Could they be looking at that? Well, in this case, though, there are the defense is arguing he didn't do it, and th there's right. kind of a debate over the DNA. There's critical DNA evidence on the knife sheath, which sort of led prosecutors to this guy in the first place. The defense says we've got our own sort of exculpatory DNA. Yeah, I mean, the only DNA that links Koberger to this crime scene is on the knife sheath. And yes, they have proven that 100%, but here's the thing that the defense is going with. There is unidentified male DNA that was also found in the house of two other males, including on a glove that was found outside of the house as well. So they're saying, hey, there was other DNA that was inside this house, and none of the victim's DNA was found in any of Koberger's uh, offices, apartments, house, his car, and the car was a big part of this too. So they're saying 
the only thing that links him is this knife sheath, but there was other DNA that was in that house at the time. Mm. Such a strange case. And he was a, a criminal justice student, right? So he studied he did, this mm -hmm. kind of stuff? He did, right. yeah. And he had written some papers on this, and he had done some kind of, you know, collecting evidence or uh, for his papers of what a murder would be like. So that, that was a big talker among the social media so, channels. Oh, it's almost like a real-life Dexter, basically. Kind of. That's how people were comparing wow. it, right? So we'll see how this plays out, because when you're looking at DNA, it is foolproof, right? We have his DNA in there, but the defense is saying, how can you just zero in on Koberger when there were other uh, DNA matches that were found inside that house? It's a lot to go through, and trial lot. begins supposedly the f in this fall? Supposedly early October. Okay. Again, these are always delayed, delayed. Though, when it comes to high yeah. profile, so I, I would expect it to honestly not start until late winter, but we just don't know. We'll see. Thanks, we'll see. Brianna.